As we all know, minoxidil is an FDA approved scientific medication which is often used for hair loss treatment and for delaying the progression of baldness. Friedman and Olson have done extensive research about minoxidil, its various formulations and their individual efficacy. Minoxidil along with finasteride, as we also are aware, is the mainstay treatment for the management of androgenetic alopecia or male pattern baldness. In spite of the fact that it has been in use for almost like 35 years for the treatment of hair loss and for its use after hair transplant, researchers and clinicians alike are skeptical about the exact mechanism of action by which minoxidil helps in hair growth. A one-year study in a significant population of males found that 84.3% patients who had received minoxidil as a liquid formulation for their male pattern baldness reported benefits which were recorded as very effective, effective or moderately effective. So minoxidil comes in two formulations. One is the foam formulation and the other one is the liquid formulation. And there are two concentrations in which minoxidil is available. One is the 5% and the second one is the 2% formulation for use on the scalp to promote hair growth in male pattern baldness. Both the formulations 5% and 2% are said to be as effective because there is no research that has shown till now that one formulation is better than the other in efficacy in promoting hair growth in androgenetic alopecia. However, there are several differences between these two formulations, between the foam and the liquid formulation of minoxidil, that as a user you should be aware of. So when we talk about the differences between minoxidil foam and minoxidil liquid formulation, convenience of application is the key to compliance by the patient for hair loss. However, if your skin is very sensitive, liquid minoxidil may not be the right choice for you. Liquid minoxidil contains propylene glycol, which is an irritant. Minoxidil foam does not cause irritation because it does not contain propylene glycol. Propylene glycol, however, increases the efficacy as seen in my clinical practice and in a host of other clinics. We have seen that liquid formulation gives slightly better results than foam formulation. It is also reported by patients that they see better growth with liquid formulation but they have changed to foam formulation because the skin is excessively sensitive to the liquid formulation. Why this happens is that this propylene glycol causes disturbance in the epithelial integrity of the skin which increases inflammation, increased blood supply and this in turn causes better absorption of minoxidil into the bloodstream. Consumer studies carried out by various companies which sell this product have found that the foam formulation scores much higher on the scale of satisfaction amongst the patients. Because of its ease of application, its quicker absorption, easy application over large bald areas, less dripping or spillage onto the face and last but not the least, it fits very easily into one's daily routine. On the other hand, the liquid formulation causes the hair, the scalp to be very oily, greasy and leaves a residue which over a period of time accumulates. Foam formulation is easy to apply over slick bald areas or in those in which thinning is extensive. Whereas in people with long hair, the foam formulation gets caught in the hair and does not reach the scalp so effectively as the liquid formulation does. However, in the end, it all boils down to patient preference, ease of application. Because with foam formulation, we have seen that the compliance, the patient compliance is far better than in those who are using liquid minoxidil. Both are easy to apply if you have formed a habit to apply either minoxidil or the liquid form. The liquid comes with a dropper or a pipette by which measured amounts of liquid minoxidil is applied to the scalp. It is easily applied over parting lines in those who have long hair and in those using it for beard growth. The delivery of liquid minoxidil to the scalp in such circumstances is far higher than if foam formulation was used because foam formulation gets caught up in long hair and it does not reach the scalp as effectively as liquid minoxidil does. However, people still prefer the foam formulation 
because it is easier to fit into your daily routine, your daily activities and it is, and it is easy to carry along when you are travelling. Now to sum it all up, what are the advantages of the liquid formulation? The liquid formulation is cheaper by almost 50% as compared to the foam formulation. The liquid formulation allows exact delivery. See, if you have to apply 1 ml, you know how much area is being covered by 1 ml and exact amounts of liquid minoxidil can be applied to the balding scalp. For the foam, you really cannot know how much has got caught in the hair and how much has reached the scalp. So the delivery, exact application, the exact volume that has been applied to the scalp is not known. It is just guesswork. The dropper allows you to apply liquid minoxidil deeper into the hair when you are having long hair and in beard hair. An exact amount of volume is applied without getting caught in the long hair. And in clinical practice, of course, better results can be obtained for hair regrowth. And in my clinical practice and the practice of many other doctors, we have seen that the liquid formulation gives slightly better results than the foam formulation does. On the other hand, the advantages of the foam formulation are also many. The foam formulation is more accepted by patients because it is easy to apply, easy to travel with this form of minoxidil, easy to take it to office in your bag. The application is quick and it does not cause excessive itchiness, especially in those with very sensitive skin. It does not have a runoff. It does not spill onto the face. The area where it is applied is exact. It does not cross the boundaries of the area of baldness. Because the foam settles down, it does not drip off like the liquid foam does. Hair styling and overall aesthetics when you apply foam formulation is far better than the liquid foam. And the systemic effects are less because less amount is absorbed into the blood. The very fact that FDA has not approved the use of 5% liquid minoxidil for use in women has a lot to say about the efficacy of 5% minoxidil in the liquid form. But in the end, the verdict is still out on which of these two formulations, liquid or foam, is better. There is no single paper which till now has shown better efficacy of liquid minoxidil. Both have their pros and cons. It is the patient who should decide what form is convenient for him after discussion with his doctor. In my practice, I personally recommend a patient to start with 2% minoxidil liquid and then after two weeks to graduate onto 5% liquid and then if the patient shows sensitivity, redness, swelling or increased itching, I may advise him to switch over to 5% foam formulation. Most of our patients, however, use liquid formulation because it is easier to apply when you have long hair and it has better results as seen in my clinical practice. Since the foam formulation causes less greasiness, less oiliness, it is more accepted in people who have to appear in front of the cameras. Celebrities do not go for liquid formulation because of this reason, because they want their hair to look the best at all times. Well, thank you for watching and if you have any questions, any comment you need to make on this talk, I will be very happy to reply back. Your comments are most welcome. Your criticism is more than welcome. Thank you for watching and God bless you.